Well, welcome to everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. The object of this uh, stream is to show you how to make the complex numbers. So how to make the complex numbers in Lean. So what are we going to do? We're going to start here by importing the real numbers, data.real.basic. That's the that's the basic theory of the real numbers, in particular the theorem that the real numbers is, is a field. Uh, that's been imported for us. But we're not going to import anything about the complexes. Lean does have the complex numbers, but we're going to make the complex number us. We're going to make the complex numbers ourselves. And so we may as well just start uh, by making a complex number. And I went to undergraduate lectures from Alan Baker when I was an undergraduate. And, under and Alan Baker gave precisely this definition of the complex numbers uh, when he was lecturing second year mathematics undergraduates at 1987 at Cambridge University. A complex number is a pair of real numbers. There, that's the official definition of the complex number according to a Fields Medalist. So how does one do that in Lean? We're going to go like this, structure, uh, complex. And how are we going to define a complex number? It's going to have a real part, which is going to be a real number. And it's going to have an imaginary part, which is going to be a real number. And that's it, right? So there's the definition of the complex numbers. And uh, I guess the first thing we should do is make, uh, what do mathematicians use for complex numbers? They use this mathematical notation here that's currently giving us an error. So let's make that notation. Notation C, let's define that to be complex there. So now we have the complex numbers. It's as simple as that. That's how to make, that's how to make the complex numbers in lean. Uh, and for example, we can now say, Look, we can now say let let z be a complex number, right? We can now say that, and that would that would look like this: variable z complex. There, that's how to say let z be a complex number. Or we can say let z and w be complex numbers. There, we could just go like that. There. So there's how you say let z and w be complex numbers. And also we can say, instead of just letting z be an arbitrary complex number, we could define some explicit complex numbers. So for example, we could do this, define, let's define z1, uh, let's define it to be a complex number. And let's define it like this. Uh, we could say its real part can be three and its imaginary part can be four. There we go. That's made a complex number. That's made three plus four i, right? That's z1 is, z1 is, 3 plus 4i. And what have we got? I mean, here's another way of making it. There's, so there's more than one way of making complex numbers. So here's another one. Uh, Z2, the complex number, could be just like, well, there's a function. Uh, let's, yeah, OK. Complex dot mook 3, 4. There you go. There's a more elaborate way. This is just a different way. Right? It's still the same thing. Uh, how, where did this complex dot mook function come from? That's an interesting question. We'll sort of we'll come back we'll come back to the origins to the origins of uh, of complex dot mook later. Uh, but first, I just want to show you that there's several ways of making complex numbers. So there's z one; it's a complex number. There's z two; it's a complex number, but it's the same one, right? Example. Uh, here's an example: z one equals z two. So this is a theorem, right? So we can go into we can go into computer game mode. There, how am I going to prove that Z1 is Z2? Z1 is defined up here. It's the complex number whose real part is three and imaginary part is four. And Z2 is here. It's also defined to be the complex number whose real part is three and whose imaginary part is four. So these two things are true by definition. There, by refl, you see. So Z1 and Z2 are literally the same complex number. It's just different ways of just different ways of making them. And here's the fanciest way of all: define Z3 complex number to be. We can just do it like this: three, four. Because a complex number is a pair of real numbers, and Lean will just say this is a generic. This these pointy brackets you get these with, I should say, it's a, it's like that. Uh, let's make this into a comment. That's how I got these pointy brackets. Uh, like that. So, oh, and of course Z three is still the same. It's still three plus four i, right? Example uh, Z one is Z three. Uh, Ruffle, there. Yeah, that sort of term mode, term mode ruffle. So there you go. So there's there's several ways of making the same complex number. So I don't really want. I mean, uh, I think I'm going to comment all of that stuff out. 
and perhaps now we should talk a little bit more before I launch into this uh, perhaps we should talk a little bit more about where this complex MOOC came from uh, so where did complex MOOC come from I'll show you where we've got when we made this structure this complex structure here a computer program generated a whole bunch of theorems about this structure that were of a completely trivial nature so a computer proved a bunch of theorems uh, a bunch of theorems and made several definitions right when we made the complex numbers so let me just show you where those theorems and definitions are uh, print prefix print prefix complex these are all the functions we've got in the complex namespace right now there so there's a whole bunch of junk here this is sort of mostly incomprehensible to mathematicians uh, but it's what the computer made when we made the complex numbers as a pair of real numbers the computer made a whole bunch of stuff here a bunch of definitions and theorems and most of these things are of no interest to us let me just stick that on pause most of these are of no interest to us but let me just flag four things let me just flag four things uh, four things of importance in fact all of the other things can be made from these four things so let me show you the four things of importance. The first one is down here, right? We've got a function re that takes a complex number and spits out a real number. And you can guess what that is. That spits out the real part, right? And we've got im here, which is another function. There, from the complexes to the reals, it takes a complex number and, of course, as you can imagine, spits out its imaginary part, right? Every complex number you make with two real numbers. And so these are the two projectors. That go with this structure. These are the structure projections back onto the the things we used to generate them. So here's MOOC. So that's the thing we saw already. So now whatever does this weird brackets, we can put brackets there if you like. There. So what is MOOC doing? MOOC MOOC takes takes a real number, e.g. three, and spits out a function. Right? There. So MOOC three four. What does that mean? It, you you feed in your real number three and then you feed in your real number four into this new function and you get a complex number out so there you go so that's how to make complex numbers you feed in two real numbers and that's how to destroy two complex numbers and I told you four things of importance but there's a computer science thing right the computer science thing is the recursor and it's rec and I'm going to say no more about it where is it here it is there there's the recursor okay not of interest to mathematicians. There, it's got capital pies in, which is normally a bad sign. Uh, so there's the recursor and there's the constructors, and that's what we have with the complex numbers. And now let's move it. And you see, all of this other stuff is just junk written by a computer program uh, that we don't really. Let's just get rid of that. Uh, let's let's unpause this. Let's go into the complex namespace. So here we are in the complex namespace. And what's our goal? Uh, goal, prove the complexes are a ring. There. So that's where we're going. And now, of course, the question is, what is a ring, right? Uh, what is a ring? That's a good question. Let's put that in here. What is a ring? Uh, what do we need? Uh, it's, it's a set, which we've got that already there and then it's it's some structure right and what's the structure the structure is zero one addition Ad addition has to be a group so we have to give it the inverse of the group law so that's z that's unary negation uh, that's z goes to negative z and multiplication right so what is a ring it's a set we've done that right it's got some structure that's something else that a ring has all of those things there and then it satisfies some theorems right it satisfies some axioms okay the axioms for a ring let's let's prove it let's go nuts let's prove it's a commutative ring there let's let's push the boat out so that's the plan of this walkthrough what i'm going to do is first of all we've made the complex numbers as a set so now we're going to make the structure that's the next thing we're going to do we're going to make 0, 1, we're going to define addition, negation, and multiplication. And then we're going to prove that all the axioms of a commutative ring are satisfied. 
So that's the plan of the talk. I'm just going to pop over and look at the chat for a second. Is there anything I need to deal with? Uh, it seems to me great. People f should feel free to ask questions. There's um. There's plenty. There's plenty of intelligent people out there. So someone has pointed out, for example, yeah, I need to tell you about, I need to tell you about the relations between these two things, and this is going to this will this will uh, this is going to come up. Okay, why don't I do this now? Okay, let's just do. Okay, request from someone in the chat. Here's here's a here's a thing. Let's define Z one. Let's define a complex number Z one to be this. Right. Now here's a theorem. Here's an easy theorem, is the real part of Z1 is 3. There. So why is that theorem true? Because Z1 is defined to be the complex number with real part 3 and uh, imaginary part 4. So why is so why is the real part of that number 3? That's true by definition, right? So I can use REFL to prove that. It was true by definition. And similarly, uh, I could do another example as well. Example the imaginary part of Z1, uh, the imaginary part of Z1 is 4. Why is that true? I mean, I can just do this, right? All right. I mean, there's there's term mode and there's tactic mode. There's the tactic mode proof. It's true by definition. So those are some of the relations. Those are the relations between these uh, between these things here. Uh, right. Let's comment those out. And now let's get going. So it would be really nice if I could switch my notifications off. Let's just press on. Uh, I know what it is. It's work email. Let's assume you can't hear it. Uh, let's make this structure then. Let's go on to this part of the talk. We need to make some structure. So we need to make 0, 1, addition, negation, and multiplication. So let's define 0. There. Uh, there it is. There. That's, so that's definition of 0, right? Uh, the zero complex number. The zero complex number has got zero real part and zero imaginary part. And unfortunately, at the minute, well, it's not unfortunate because we're going to fix it. Uh, we can't use there. We could put zero here. That would be an example of a complex number. But we can't use the numeral zero yet because we haven't taught lean. About, this is notation, right? And the way we're going to teach Lean about that notation is we're going to make an instance. Instance. Uh, we're going to we're going to tell Lean has zero there, and it's this zero there. There. So now this thing works. So now this numeral we can use this numeral zero. The complex numbers has a zero, and it's defined to be this zero, and zero is defined to be the number with zero real part and zero imaginary part. So there we go. So now we have zero. That's good. Let's put that there. Uh, zero. So now what? Let's do one. Uh, it's just as easy. Uh, uh, one. A complex number one. Uh, and what's the complex number one? Def one is a complex number, and we have to say what its real part and its imaginary part are. And I guess its real part is one, and its imaginary part is zero. There we go. And and we would like to make one, right? Example, we would like to make that work. You see, that doesn't work yet. I've got an error. I always keep these down here. It always says no errors for me. I get, I don't like errors. And you see, we're, it's, it leans complaining because it doesn't know what the numeral one stands for. So I'll just do this. There. I'm going to claim that the complex numbers have a one, and that one is the one I just defined. There. So there you go. Now one is a complex number. That's good. So now I can make 0 and 1 as complex numbers. Uh, that's done. What, where's my plan? 0, 1, addition, negation, and multiplication. So the next one's addition. Uh, so what's addition? Let's define add. Uh, so oh, now add, has some add is a function, right? Add has some input. So z and w are two complex numbers. And I'm going to define a complex number as an output. And what's the definition of addition? Uh, I guess this complex number has got a real part and an imaginary part. And the real part of Z add W is just real part of Z add real part of W. There. And the imaginary part is imaginary part of Z 
add the imaginary part of w there so there's my definition of add and i should perhaps i should perhaps now is a point a point where i could tell you about this look let me do you see i put let me just here's some other definitions let's define add primed let me just show this is a functional programming language so we don't really need those brackets so this works as well right mz add mw there so that's an that's a second definition of it i've put a little prime by it right there's a there's a second definition of addition and i claim these definitions are the same right example look add equals add there so why does why does add equal add prime to, like that's because re z with brackets is just literally by definition real z without brackets right we can prove this by refl right add and add prime are the same and i'll show you another thing as well uh, let's do add double primed uh, here's another way of doing it you can do z dot re plus w dot re z dot m plus w dot m this is quite common in procedural languages my son was telling me this dot notation uh, I, I'm not a computer scientist I've got no idea about whether procedural languages or functional languages have got anything to do with anything but what's going on here uh, Z is a Z has type complex so Z dot re means complex dot re Z you see I I re dot Z there we're in the we're in the comp maybe I should make maybe I should make that clear here look check complex dot when you're outside the namespace this function is called complex dot re the function that maps the complexes to the real it's called complex dot re and when you go into the namespace it's still called complex dot re but it's got a nice it's got an easier name it's can just called re you see that's the point of the namespace it makes it makes everything much shorter uh, so there's our double primed and and I, you see look we can just put that prime there as well no we can't there we can just put that prime there you can see that add and add double primed uh, the, the same function and indeed they're the same function by definition because there's a proof that they're all equal so there's lots and lots of ways of defining addition and you know I guess when you look at the outputs you'll sometimes see you'll sometimes see things like z dot re uh, so now let's so now we need notation notation plus We've defined the add function and now we need the add notation. Uh, so how am I going to do that? I'm going to go instance has add C uh, and it's just going to be add there. So I've shown you all the proofs now. Uh, and so I think neg, I may as well just copy. I mean, well, I'll do, I'll do neg and then I'll copy mull. Uh, what's neg? neg looks like this neg is the negation of a complex number so def neg i've got z is a complex number and it's the following complex number it's minus the it's real part is minus the real part of z and it's imaginary part is minus the imaginary part of z uh that hasn't gone well uh oh because i didn't say it was a complex number there there and i guess i need some instance has neg c is neg there so now i can talk about so now i can talk about things like minus z if z is a complex number a multiplication i'm just going to cheat i've got all the answers here uh this repository i should this repository has just gone live where's 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 multiplication here we are uh there let me just let me just steal that there so nothing nothing surprising happened there Mul. I just define multiplication of two complex numbers and you can see what the definition is if I move this here there let me just move this down here the product of two complex numbers I've just explicitly written what the real you know I'm not attempting to do any calculations with I'm you know there's no I right I'm not saying oh I squared is negative one blah 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 I'm just literally defining I'm literally defining these functions on pairs of real numbers so so that's literally, you know, you expand out Z and W as a, you know, re plus I times M and you multiply everything out and you look at what the real, real and imaginary parts are. And this is this. And you see this works. Re, all these things are real numbers, right? You understand what's going on here, right? So real numbers, you know, real numbers, kind of addition and multiplication and the fact that, and the fact that it's a ring, you know, the fact that it's a, a field are all already proved, right? That was our import, right? That was what that was what our import did. 
this import right at the top here, import data.real.basic. That just says make the reels work. So there, what's that blue dot there? Oh, we can get rid of that, I suppose. There we go. Uh, so right, so that's the end of the uh, that's the end of the second part of the story, because we've now done we've now done this. We've now defined all the structure. So now, right, here's the here's the fun part. <laughs> now we have to now we have to check that the complex numbers satisfy the axioms of a commutative ring. So here's the fun part. Uh, Proving, proving that the complex is a ring. Yeah. So we've got the structure, so let's go. So instance, com ring, complexes. That's how you prove the complex numbers of a ring in lean. Begin, end. And now I'm going to do a refined struct. Uh, so this is just all syntax, don't worry about this. And so now I'll put uh, 0 is the complex number 0. And one can be the complex number one, and add can be addition, and negation can be uh, has neg dot neg, and multiplication can be multiplication, and if I put a comma there, bingo. Right. So now this is the fun part. Let's move this over here. We've done, we've done the computer science bit, making the definitions, and now we have to prove the theorems. And there's the, and there's the 11 theorems. So you can see lean is actually, that there's going to be some time wasted here, because for example, add com, right? There's, there's one of the things we've got to prove. We've got to prove that, we've got to prove that a plus b equals b plus a. And because that's one of the axioms for a commutative ring. And we've also got to prove 0 plus a is a. And we've also got to prove a plus 0 is a. You see, so these axioms are, in fact, they're not sort of optimal axioms. You know, axioms are, axioms are not optimal. There. So you see, now we have an, I have an error in my code. I don't like an error in my code. Uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. Sorry. There. Now there's no errors. Now I have a warning. And you can see, you can see the problem is that yeah well actually you can't see, you can't see the full extent of the problems let's i think we should practice let's not let's practice let's pick an easy one this one looks easy we've got to prove these 11 goals now right once we prove these 11 goals we're done uh and if you played the natural number game then you've seen situations like this where you have to prove 11 goals uh so let's let's go before this there so let's 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 have a little experiments and now let's see example there this is one of the axioms we have to prove so let's and it looks quite easy right zero add a is a that doesn't look too difficult uh, so yeah at some point we're gonna have to deal with these 11 goals but let's just worry about this one particular example first. So yeah, so this is where the puzzles start, right? So I mean, what's what's just happened, right? What's just happened? You know, this is this is this is like some puzzle game. This is like Zelda. You know, we've just we've just walked you know we've just walked into into a dungeon. Okay, we've got ten we've got ten fiendish puzzles. Whatever we've got, you know, ten fiendish puzzles and then the boss. Right, maybe the I don't know, maybe the boss is Muller sock or something. Okay, and and this is you know this is before we actually before we actually go into that dungeon and start battling these eleven bosses. Why don't we just practice seeing if we can kill seeing if we can kill this goal here, seeing if we can solve this little puzzle. Uh, so how are we going to solve this? Uh, there's going to be a there's going to be a question from the there's, I'm going to ask a question to the chat now. Interactive lecturing, you see. Uh, so the first thing we should, we're trying to prove something for all complex numbers. So why don't we do intro z, okay? So z is a complex number. We now we have to prove that zero plus z is z, okay? So how do we prove how do we prove that zero plus z is z, okay? And now a mathematician's instinct is now is now kind of wrong, or at least my my instinct at least. Okay, my instinct is just run at it, right? 
it's obvious, right? This, remember, this is obvious. This is obvious, so it can't be hard. Okay, so let's just attack, attack without thinking. So that's how we're going to prove this. Yeah, induct. Yeah, thank you very much. Induction. Yeah, let's do induction. Induction Z. <laughs> what, what, what do you reckon? Yeah, that's. It's actually that has done something, right? What has it done? Yeah, it's. Uh, it's changed. I think we could probably do. I think we do cases. I think it's done this cases Z with X Y. I think that's what it's done. So. Cases Z with X Y, right? And now we can see. Uh, yeah, so now we can see what the goal is. So we've got this zero plus this equals this, right? How, this is, how are we going to prove this? I, I, we could start unfolding, couldn't we? We could unfold has zero dot zero there. And now we could unfold zero, right? I am, so I should say nothing here. Let's, let's just, let's unravel the definitions, okay? Let's unravel definitions of everything, right? So what's going on here? Okay, let's see, let's let's work out what the question is. Okay, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to try and work out what the question is by just completely unfolding everything there. So you see, we used to have zero here, but now we're looking at the definition of zero. And what's this addition, right? What's the definition of addition? So unfold has add not add. So I should, you know, I should maybe make it quite clear here, right? This is, you know, this is not how the final proof go, right? This is not how the final proof will go. Okay, this is, this is an experiment. Once we've understood what we're trying to prove, we're going to prove this properly. But at the minute, we're just trying to work out what we're trying to prove. And you see, we could unfold add, right? There's zi this is this is the zero and this is the add and these other two unfoldings are the notation. So now we've got this this thing here, right? That's what our goal is. And now you can see that there's a lot of simplification that can be done here. You see this this area here, there this this mess here. That mess there. You see that says it's the real part of the complex number whose real part is zero and imaginary part is zero. We can work that out, right? That's just zero by definition. So again, we can do more definitional unfolding, right? Let's do more. Let's unfold the definition of more things, right? We're just going to do this by desimp, right? Definitional simplification, definitional simplification there. And now after this definitional simplification there, so nothing has changed, right? This was the last time there. No mathematics, no mathematics happens, okay? No mathematics happens be below this point. All we were doing, when students say to me, I can't do question seven, and I look at question seven, and it says blah, 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 prove, prove that this is an equivalence relation, and they say I can't do it, and I say, well, do you understand what an equivalence relation is? And they say no, and I say, well, the reason you can't do the question is you don't know what the question says, right? We can't do this question because we don't really know what the question says, so we're trying to work out what the question says by just looking at the definitions of everything. And this is what the question says. The question says that the real, the, the, the complex number whose, I'll write it down what it says. It says the complex number with real part zero plus x and imaginary part zero plus y equals the complex number with real part x and real part y, right? That's what the goal is. And now, why is this true? So the reason this is true, because two complex numbers with the same real and imaginary part are equal. That's exactly what we need, right? We want to say, to prove that these, this is the goal, remember. This isn't a hypothesis, this is the goal. Our goal is to prove that these two complex numbers are equal. And if we could apply a lemma that said, if two complex numbers have got the same real and imaginary parts, then they're equal, 
then we would reduce the question to proving that 0 at x is x and that 0 at y is y. Right? These are easy, right? Have h. Look, I can look at this. Have h. It says z the real number 0 add x add x is 0. Why is that true? The ring tactic will do that, right? Because the real numbers are already a ring. So this we can do, you see. This we can do. Uh, has something funny happened? Why have I got a goal x equals 0? Have I done something stupid? Uh, oh, because 0 plus x is x. <laughs> That's why. There. So this goal gets done, and you could see we could we could make progress, right? Now we could we could even do rewrite, we could do rewrite h there. And now you see, do you see what just happened? If I move you see, look where my cursor is here. If I if I move this cursor around in the proof, you can see this is changing from zero plus x to x because of the rewrite. So this would be one way of doing it, kind of proving individually all of the parts I want, you know, with the ring tactic and then substituting everything in. But you see. Computer scientists think backwards, right? Right? They would do, they would do the real and imagine, you know, they would, uh, yeah, computer scientists think backwards. This is the problem, okay? We need to think backwards, right? How about we make the next step? If two complex numbers have the same real and imaginary part, then they're equal. There, and we, let's just kind of this. This is just junk, right? We we did all this to try and work out what the problem was. There, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get rid of this. There. And we need to work out how to think backward. We need to prove this. So this is a separate lemma that we need. So let's go back before the experiments. Let's try. Let's prove it here. X, right? Extensionality. Extensionality is a general principle. It says that two things uh, made of the same stuff are equal. Right? That's what extensionality means. It's a, it's a word that logicians and philosophers and computer scientists might use. Uh, but perhaps not something mathematicians might see it. The axiom of extensionality in set theory says that two sets are equal if they've got the same elements. Uh, so what lemma do I need to prove here? I think I need to prove lemma x. So I'll have z and w complex numbers. And let's have a hypothesis. Uh, the real hypothesis is that uh, is that the real part of z equals the real part of w. And let's have an imaginary part hypothesis that says the imaginary part of z equals the imaginary part of w there and the conclusion is that z equals w right this is the thing we were missing okay this is when we did all that unraveling that i've now deleted and we realized that once we'd done all the unraveling the step we needed was this step here so let's just prove this step here independently this extensionality lemma so how are we going to do it? I think we're going to do cases. I mean, let's look at real and imaginary parts. The case is Z. Z with, I don't know, A, B. Let, let Z be A plus I, B. There. Let Z be A plus I, B. There. Oops. And uh, case is W. Case is W with C, D. There. So that says, let W be C plus I, D. There. And now, and now let's see. Let's see if this is just simple. Simp star at star. Let's see if the simplifier can do it. So there you go, solved, right? This lemma isn't hard. It's just that, yeah, it's just kind of messy, right? But the the simplifier has done it, right? Lean's lean simplifier. Lean simplifier has solved this. But it's, remember, it's mathematically, look at what this says, right? This is mathematically trivial, okay? So Lean Simplifier has solved it. So that's great. And do you know what we're going to do? This is a really clever thing. We're going to tag it with extensionality. Look, we're going to, there, tag it, tag it with the, uh, with the x attribute. 
and then the X tactic will use it. Right? So let's go back down here. So let's get rid of all this junk. Uh, after intro Z, why don't we just do this? Why don't we just do X there? That says two complex numbers are, two complex numbers are equal if their real parts are, and imaginary parts are there. And so now we've got two goals, you see. Uh, you see, this is, we're going backwards, right? So now what do we want to do? So now remember, now, you know, now math, you know, now, now what do we, what happens now if we run at it like an idiot? Now let's run at it, now let's run at it now like an idiot again. Uh, we can do, we can do unfold, we can do all the unfolding, right? Has add, has add dot add and add and has zero dot zero and zero there. Oh, heavens above. Oh, this is right. Let's not run at it like an idiot. The, let's try and work out, why did, why did that, that's kind of funny. Oh. Why did that do crazy things? Isn't that interesting? Isn't lean terrifying? Anyway, maybe we shouldn't run at it like an idiot. Maybe we should think, let's let's think about, I mean, how are we going to do this? Yeah, what's the actual, pr this is the question. This is, of course this is obvious, but what's the actual proof, right? What's the actual proof of this result? Uh, I think... Let's un yeah, I think I think this goal must say zero plus Z re equals Z re, right? That's what that goal says. There. So if we if we unfold if we unfold definitions of zero, the complex number zero of course, and add, we get this. There. But what we want, uh, we want a machine to unfold this for us. Right? So I'm going to show you. So the next thing I'm going to do is here's how to get here's how to get simp to do this unfolding for us. Definitional unfolding for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell this is the problem here. Let's get rid of this. Yeah, you see, the, the problem here is that we're adding two complex numbers and then taking the real part. What we need, let's, let's, uh, let's put a definition here. Look at this definition. Def add re. Uh, this says, no, this is a theorem. Let's tag it with simp. Simp. Add uh, simp lemma. It's a lemma. Add re. It says it for Z and W complex numbers. It says that the real part of Z plus W is the real part of Z plus the real part of W, right? Uh, there. And why is that true? I mean, that's true by definition, right? So that's going to be refl there. So that's the proof of that. The real part of Z plus W is the real part of Z plus the real part of W. But the re you see, I mean, that's just true by definition. So why do we even bother giving it a name? The reason we bother giving it a name is so we can tag it with the simp attribute. And now if we go down here, where's our proof? Uh, Right, here's our proof that 0 plus A is A. What is all this junk? Let's get rid of all this. There. Now let's try, now let's just, let's just focus on this first goal. This first goal here, there. If I do simp on this first goal now, you see, something happens, right? If I if I run the simplifier, I've just told the simplifier that the real I've just told the simplifier this thing that was true by definition, even though it was true by definition, the simplifier wasn't using it, right? So now the simplifier uses the fact that the real part of Z plus W is the real part of Z plus the real part of W. And uh, it gets further along in the calculation. But you see, it still gets stuck because the sim this is true by definition, right? We could finish this with refl. There, you see that goal's accomplished. You see, we've finished it. But I don't want to finish it with refl. I want to finish it with simp, right? Simp should know that the real part of zero is zero. 
So let's get, where's his zero here? There should be another lemma, another simp lemma here. Lemma zero re, and it should say that the real part of zero is zero there. And it's, and it's true by definition there. So now I've trained the simplifier to know that the real part of zero is zero. It's not hard to prove, you see. We proved it by definition. I've got errors. That's not good. Oh, I see. Haha. <laughs> the reason I've got errors is because now the simplifier is solving this goal completely, right? There, let's put that there. And so now this is great. The simplifier should solve this, right? Simp. But it doesn't solve it because, unfortunately, we've only told the simplifier what the real part of x add y is. We haven't told it what the imaginary part of x add y is. So we're missing a whole bunch of... You know, there's a bunch of stuff missing, right? Add re is, add re is there, but we need... We need add im, and these are all uh, these are all in here. I'm just going to copy these. Let's put add im there. There, there's add im, and now what's the simplifier doing down here? You see, the simplifier's got a bit further, and now it needs to know that the imaginary part of zero is zero, and so that's going to be up here. There, zero im. So let's put that where? Where's my definition of zero? Here's my definition of zero. There, and that's that's also yeah, that's also known to the simplifier now. And so now you can see it's solving things. The simplifier now has solved that goal. We can put that there. And now we've got one error. Why are we on one error? Let's, let's sorry, there we go. Uh, we're on one error because I'm not doing this. There, back down to zero errors. Uh, so remember our, remember our problem. Uh, we've, got this, we've got this boss level, right? Uh, we've got these, you know, this is the dungeon we've got to do. We've got 11 of these lemmas. Uh, and so let's go. I think, are we ready? Let's, right, let's just try proving them. Okay, so fun part, proving the complexes are real. Right, let's go. I think we have enough. What can we see? We can see 11 goals. So... Right. Let's look. At, let's look at our. Let's look at our proof here. This was. This is one of the simple goals, and we started with some intros. So let's start with some intros, right? Uh, intros. Let's put a semicolon there. Let's put intros there. There we go. So now we've got eleven goals. Uh, you know, here's an example. I think that's going to be one of the hardest ones, right? A, B, C. A times B times C is A times B times C. We're going to prove that by equating real and imaginary parts, right? Uh, so here's our, we're going to prove all these 11 goals at once, right? So now what's the next thing we need to do? Ah, oh, the next thing to do is supply extensionality, right? There. And now instead of 11 goals, we've got 22 goals, right? Number of goals just instantly doubled, because instead of proving 11 identities between complex numbers, we've now got to prove 22 identities between real numbers. There. Did I put these, si I'm going to, I need some more simple lemmas now, right? I've done zero, let me just... Let me just copy these in, right? They're not very interesting. Let me just let me just tell you what I'm doing. There. Here's the theory for one. I'm telling I'm telling the simplifier that the real part of one is one and the imaginary part of one is zero. And let me also tell the simplifier that the real part of negative x, there, look, the real part of negative z is minus the real part of z. So let's just let's just stick these in under neg there because it would just be boring for me to type that especially multiplication look at the length of these lemmas uh, there so that's now there you see what the the mess there the real part of z times w is the real part of z times the you know this is a this is just true by definition that's why the proof is refl but the reason we the reason we actually do, you know the reason we give this lemma a name, even though it's true by definition, is so we can tell the simplifier about it. So here we are. Let's go back to our commutative ring. We've got intros, we've got x. We've now got 22 goals. So the next thing I want to do is run the simplifier, right? I run the simplifier and it's having a good think. And now I've got 12 goals. <laughs> there. So here are my goals. Let's have a look at the top one. You see the top one is associativity of real numbers, right? Remember, A, B, and C are real numbers here. Uh, and so the fact that the fact that associativity is true in the real numbers, that's true because the real numbers are a ring, which we know, right? And this thing as well, this is true because, this is, again, true because the real numbers are a ring. So the next thing we should do uh, to try and prove, to try and, you know, to try and beat this, to try and beat this dungeon, is we should try the ring tactic. And we try the ring tactic, and it proves all the lemmas. 
<laughs> so, so that's the end of the proof. You see, no warnings and no errors. So we must approve. We must approved. We have we have rigorously proved. We have rigorously proved that the complexes are a ring. Isn't that crazy? So here's so I've made a game, right? I should uh this is this is a uh, what I just did in this video was I just went through uh I went through complex dot basic, right? I've written I've written my own complex dot basic and here it is, you know, here's the doc string at the top. Uh and then after this I've just written exactly, you know, I, I was doing live coding throughout this video, but uh here you see I've just I've written it all down again with examples and uh notation. And and all of the you know, I just do I just do exactly what I just did in this talk. Uh and maybe oh there's another example. There's me proving X. Oh, look at I could even make that better. Simp star at star, I think that does it. Yeah. There we go. Let's tidy that proof up a bit. Uh and there's the proof that the complex numbers are a ring. I think my proof actually is a bit nicer. Because, uh, yeah, why don't I just fix this? I could do it like this. Well, maybe I'll fix this up later. Uh, but then after that, there's just a couple more random things. For example, uh, I, I talk a bit about how to do... I gave the X proof in uh, tactic mode, but here's a term mode. Here's a term mode proof ex of extensionality. Here's another triviality about complex numbers. If you, if you make the complex number whose real part is the real part of Z and whose imaginary part is the imaginary part of Z, this complex number is Z. That's something called eater equivalence or something, I don't know. Uh, and finally, here's this lemma here. We proved, we proved the hard part of this lemma, right? We proved that two complex numbers are equal if and only if they have the same real and imaginary parts. So if you actually want to do the lemmas yourselves, then uh, x if is a very important lemma for you uh, because you can rewrite with it. The problem is if your goal is z equals w, then you can just use extensionality to reduce to this. But if you've got z equals w as a hypothesis, uh, then you can't use extensionality. You'll have to rewrite with x if. Uh, and there's some chat about training the simp tactic. And now the levels that I'm not going to do, there's four other levels in this game. There's i. We just proved that the complex numbers were a ring and we never defined the square root of negative one, which I think is kind of interesting. So there you go. You can start by defining the complex number i to be zero. Like Spoiler alert, the complex number i is the number with zero real part and one imaginary part. That's what you're supposed to put there. And now you've got to prove some theorems, right? You've got to prove the real part of i is zero, the imaginary part of i is one. You've got to prove that i times i is negative one. If you can't prove that i times i is negative one in a relatively straightforward matter, in a relatively straightforward manner, then you should maybe go back and review this video to see how it's done. And here's a hard level, proving that i is non-zero. That's a slightly harder level. So that's level one of uh, of i of um, the complex number. I've just played through the tutorial level, but. Uh, there. There's level one of the complex number game. Level two, level two looks like, which one's level two? Complex conjugation, I think. There, there yeah, level two is complex conjugation. You define the complex conjugate of a complex number. I'll, here's a hint, another spoiler alert. Uh, the real part uh, of complex conjugate of Z is re Z, and it's minus, minus M Z. There you go. There's the spoil of a complex conjugation. And now there's just lots and lots of lemmas you've got to prove about complex conjugation. Look, you can prove that complex conjugation is a homomorphism of rings. That would be a kind of a, a cool thing to prove now. So no spoilers. I'll remove that. Uh, and then after conj.lean, what else is there? Then uh, there's norm squared. Exercise three is you define the norm squared of a complex number. This is, this is re z squared. Well, re z times re z uh, plus m z times m z. Uh, that would do for a definition of that. And now you've got to prove lots of theorems about about the norm. Like you've got to prove the norm of zero is zero, and the norm of one is one, and the norm of i is one. That sort of thing. Uh, let's sorry that out again. And then finally, uh, the last level, which I think is sensible. Oh, is coercion. Oh, uh, is a boring level of real. 
this is quite a computer science -y level. Uh, this, this just sets up the theory of the canonical map from the reals to the complexes. And there you go. So that's that's the last, that's, yeah, that should be um, level four, whatever. Level four coercion. And then after that, uh, this is a harder level. I haven't done this level myself. Well, I have done this level myself, yeah, when I was formalizing the complex numbers two years ago, but I haven't written out model solutions for this. So the next level is to define the inversion map from the complexes to itself and prove that the complexes are a field. I put exactly uh, what one needs to do here. That im should be inv there. Uh, but all the others, you have to prove you have to prove lemmas about, you have to prove mull inv cancel there, for example. That's the sort of thing you need to prove, right? If a isn't zero, then a multiplied by its inverse is one. This is one of the axioms for a field that isn't one of the axioms for a ring. Uh, and then finally, uh, there's the impossible level, which is this one there, which is level proof that the complex numbers are algebraically closed. There you go. That's uh, that's really quite tricky. And let me just finish this video by showing you that actually, even though it's tricky, uh, Chris Hughes has done it already. You can't see my, I'm going to, curses. You can't see, I'm, uh, oh, I can maybe just temporarily, how about this? There, and now minimize this. Hopefully now you can see my uh, my screen. I'm through, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that every complex number has a root. And the other link here, as you can see, if I control click here, there. Then here's the proof in MathLib. This is Lean's maths library, MathLib. And this proof here was written by Chris Hughes, who's an undergraduate mathematician at Imperial College London. So there's the proof that the, you see what it says. It says, for all, polyname, for all polynomials with complex coefficients of degree bigger than zero, there exists a complex number, uh, so Z, such that Z is a root of F. And there's the proof. Uh, and there's Chris's proof in full. And it's quite big and complicated. But that's what mathematicians can do if they put their mind to it. Uh, so that was all I had to say. And uh, thank you very much. Let's go back to VS Code and let's start recording.